This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about static CE2301, exam number three, page number one. The first page was a solving for the member forces in a truss by the joint method. And here's the setup. It's kind of a composite of all three tests. Uh, we have four joints, A, B, C, D. This is the geometry, six foot and six foot, and eight and 17.5 feet. Have an applied force of 15 kips at B, vertical down, three kips horizontal at D to the right. First thing I'm going to do whenever I can is solve for the reactions uh, of this truss. And I always want to take a sum of moments about one of the reactions to eliminate those forces from my equation. I'm going to sum moments about point A is equal to zero. It's negative 15, and I've assumed counterclockwise is positive, so this is clockwise moment created by the 15 kips. It's negative 15 times its moment arm of 8 feet, plus the applied force of 3 kips, which is counterclockwise about point A times its 6 foot moment arm, plus CY times 25.5 positive because it's counterclockwise also creating the 25 foot 5 moment arm becomes comes from the 8 foot plus 17.5 feet. Uh, doing all the math I get negative 20 plus 18 plus CY moving all those to the other side of the equal sign I get CY is equal to 120 minus 18 divided by 25.5 4.0 kips up Sum of forces in the Y, positive is up, zero is all I have is the AY force, unknown, minus 15 applied force, plus the four kips I just solved for at C. So AY is equal to 15 minus four, or 11 kips up. At we do sum of forces in the X direction, the only thing I have is AX. I've assumed it positive to the right, plus my positive to the right applied force, so that makes AY three kips negative, which means it's really to the left. Now I'm ready to move on to joint number C, joint C. Here I did a free body diagram of it. Remember the geometry of this of these two members BC and CD are six vertical, 17.5 horizontal. Square root of the sum of the squares gives us 18.5 for the length of the hypotenuse. So I've shown that on my free body diagram because I like to have that information there. And I've assumed, note that I've assumed all my forces in my members unknown as tension. And I'll let my signs tell me otherwise, if that's the case. First thing I do is sum forces in the x direction because that eliminates my applied force of four kips from our reaction at C. And I get both of these are the horizontal components to the left, so it's negative. 17.5 over 18.5 force in CB minus the same term times the force in CD, and that's equal to zero. Therefore, I can eliminate the 17.5 over 18.5, and I just get FCD is equal to negative FCB. Now I'm ready to go on to this equation. Remember, it, uh, when I'm doing the joint method, I don't have any moment equations available to me. I've just got to do it all with sum of forces in the x and the y direction. Um, that's equal to positive up is equal to zero. So the component of FCB is up 6 over 18.5 FCB. If the force in CD is down, so it's negative 6 over 18.5 FCD. But I just learned up here that FCD is equal to negative FCB, so I can plug that in here. When I've also got my four kips applied force reaction from, from C, CY. So I get 6 over 18.5 FCB plus, because I've got this negative sign that's reversed this negative sign, 6 over 18.5 FCB, same exact term, plus 4. Uh, that means I have 12 over 18.5 FCB, 
So that's equal to negative 4, taking the, neg the 4 to the other side of the equal sign. So FCB is equal to 18.5 over 12 times negative 4, or negative 6.17 kips. The negative sign means my assumption of tension was wrong, so it's compression. So FCB is in compression, and FCD is the opposite of that, so it's positive 6.17, meaning my assumption of tension on FCD was correct, so it's 6.17 kips tension. Okay, that makes sense to me. It's kind of trying to spread out. This truss is trying to spread out, and I'm getting compression in this member resisted by the tension in B in CD. I move on to joint B up here at the top. I have my 15 kips applied force. I have my unknown FAB here to the left, assumed in tension. The geometry over here is a 345 or a 6810 uh, triangle. So I've shown that here. I have my vertical member, BD, assumed in tension down. And here's my known force from member BC or CB. And remember, it's compression, so it's pushing on the joint instead of pulling away from it in tension. So I've drawn it with that correct sign on the arrow, showing its geometry. And uh, so this is a good free body diagram at B. First thing I want to do is sum forces in the x direction, positive to the right is equal to zero. Starting on the left side of my joint, I look at negative four-fifths, which is the x component, horizontal component of FAB, to the left, so it's negative, minus 17.5 over 18.5, the force in BC, which is that known six, that I just figured out, 6.17. And that's all I have in the x direction. So I can solve for FAB, moving it to the other side of the equal sign, doing all the math. I get FAB is equal to 5 fourths times negative 17.5 over 18.5 times 6.17, the force in BC. So I get a negative sign for FAB. It's negative 7.29 kips. So the negative makes it compression, opposite of what I assumed, which was tension. So then I go to sum of forces in the y at point B, pin B is equal to zero, positive is up. I get three-fifths from my FAB, which I now know is compression, so it's really pushing on the joint. I drew this little arrow here to remind me of that. It's pushing on the joint, so it's pushing up, vertical component, three-fifths, FAB is seven. 0.29, just solve for that, minus the 15 kips applied force, minus the unknown FBD, assumed in tension down, plus the part from FCB, which is 6 over 18.5 times that force in BD, uh, I mean uh, CB, 6.17, so combining terms, doing the math, moving the FBD to the other side of the equal sign, I get that it's equal to 3 fifths of 729 minus 15 plus 6 over 18.5 times 6.17 is equal to negative 8.63 kips compression. Opposite of what I, the negative means it's compression, opposite of what I assumed, and I now want to correct the direction of it. It's really up, pushing on the joint. Last but not least, I go to the bottom, go to joint D, and I do a free body diagram. I now know FBD is equal to 863, FCD is equal to 617 in tension, pulling away. I have my applied force of 3 kips. I, the only unknown is FAD. I assume it in tension. Here's the geometry, the angles. I just want to do positive to the right. Sum of forces X equal to 0 is equal to negative 4 fifths AD, the horizontal component of AD, 4 fifths to the left, so it's negative plus 17.5 over 18.5, the horizontal component of this force in CD, which is 6.17, plus my applied 3 kip force. I can solve directly for FAD, rearranging, uh, flipping the 4 fifths and making it 5 fourths of 5.83 is this component, plus the 3, makes it 11.04 kips positive, so it's tension as I assumed, 
I write it like that. Now, whenever I can, I, want, I can check my results by looking at joint A. This is optional. If I have time on a test, I'd want to do this and make sure that I've got the correct answer. So I do a free body at joint A, and I have the apply or the reaction forces of 3 horizontal and 11 vertical. I have the force in AB that I've solved for up here, 7.29 compression, so it's pushing on the joint. I have the force in AD, which is 11.04, which is tension pulling away from the joint. Sum of forces in the X direction, positive is to the right, is equal to negative 3 minus 4 fifths of 7.29, this component, plus 4 fifths of 11.04, the, the component coming from AD. That's negative 3 minus 583 plus 883 is equal to 0, so that checks out. Sum of forces in the y direction, 0. I get 11, the reaction, minus 3 fifths of 7.29, the force in AB, minus 3 fifths of the force in uh, uh, 11.04 uh, 11 here. And it's going down, so it's minus. So that all checks out to be zero, too.